we are live. Welcome to Zero Cool Podcast. I'm uh, I'm DJ Zero Cool. A uh, quick couple of things I want to go over before we started. Uh, number one, shout out to Skylar uh, Steven. Number one, happy belated birthday. Uh, thank you for breaking my toe earlier this week while we were sparring. I'll see you Monday. Um, he also came up to me this week and told me he was really enjoying the podcast, so I wanted to thank him for, for tuning in. And... We are officially under sponsorship. Big shout out to joinplayboy.com, our official sponsor. Uh, I should have had this email opened before I started going into that, but I got kind of distracted while we were talking about everything for the pre-interview. Um, we are we are sponsored by joinplayboy.com. Just click the link, support Zero Cool Podcasts, and subscribe. Uh, you have a custom gallery. Oh, that's for me. I have a custom gallery link. So, yeah, that's all you have to do. Go to joinplayboy.com, support Zero Cool Podcast, and uh, you'll be officially directing, supporting this podcast, and uh, you will probably hear some stories about some of the people I used to work with from over there. Um, also, going into a couple other announcements as well. Uh, coming up this Saturday, March 27th, join us at Brothers Bar and Grill on Water Street for UFC 260. Uh, Stipe versus Nuganu 2. Uh, the main card starts at 9. If you're a Rufus Sport member, you can watch with us, uh, watch the fights with us in the private back room. Space is limited, so please come early. Once again, the main card starts at 9. Uh, shout to Lenny uh, Rufati, who's going to be making his 155 debut the same night on Triton Fights 18. I'll probably have my iPad with me so that we can watch that as well. And cheer him on. Best of skill to the homie Lenny the Gorilla. Uh, Tenlo is in the in the house with us. Joey, Zach, and uh, Tommy uh, of Tenlo, the music duo. Episode eight, motherfuckers. Woo! Episode eight. <laughs> We've I've officially yeah, yeah. made it eight times of doing this now. Where five people have officially tuned in. <laughs> you're, you're, you're all warmed up. Yeah, you're all warmed up. Um, but yeah, man. So we, I like I said, dude, we had a, a great talk before we even started. Um, Officially, episode number eight now. Uh, if by the way, if you're watching this live, uh, be sure to check out on YouTube. All the former episodes are there. Uh, we did a great interview, or I should say, we. I did a great interview uh, podcast with a uh, Chris Varakis, uh, DJ Chris V. Last week, we got deep and we talked about cryptocurrency and all sorts of shit. So, but uh, yeah, so so tell me a bit about this group. Number one, I'm fucking pissed. I've not seen you guys live yet. Um, it's, uh, with, with COVID going on and everything, I imagine it's, it's tough as hell to be able to play live these days. Are there plans to be able to do that with doing your live show in the future? Yes, sir. We are working hard on a, uh, a stellar live show that we are both excited about. It just started maybe a few, few months ago. Um, a lot of techie, techie things needed to happen in order for it to happen. Being that we're both multi-instrumentalists from different groups playing rock music, mm -hmm. condensing down into an electronic rock dance vibe so it's like <clears throat> it's completely it's a whole new realm different world yeah, yeah. but think, uh, uh, it's coming yeah i think being um a two, Tommy, pull up on the mic i think being like a two-piece it's uh it's definitely brought a lot of challenges to figure out like okay how, how many instruments can we actually play at once you know um so basically we're going to do a lot of the guitars like synth piano you know vocals and stuff like that um, but we don't have like, you know, four other dudes behind us with like bass and, you know, drums and all this stuff. So we're going to rely on technology, um, to join us on stage and, uh, put together something pretty badass. So, yeah, it's been kind of interesting that there's this weird direction right now where full ensemble bands have slowly kind of moved away, like not immediately, but like you don't see a, like a 10 piece band like Dave Matthews coming out anytime soon right. where it's like they have a violinist they have a saxophone player they have a drummer they have a bassist they have a violinist they have a guitar player and vocalist you you can go about it now and you see a band like 21 pilots you know they have you know the piano bass player and drummer and then that's it and they're, they're able to go on tour and still have a full sound and as someone who has a music background i take a look at it and i'm like wait i can hear this yeah, yeah. i can hear that like how are you guys going about doing it dude what's really cool uh, as like as we go through the stems on uh, on our live show, we get to pick and choose which parts we want to play. Like, oh, dude, I want to play the the drums here, the keys here, the guitar here. It's like it's pretty liberating. Or just rock out with uh, without an instrument in a, in a tutu, some fireworks, whatever, whatever the fuck <laughs> yeah, we yeah, want to yeah, do. Yeah, with the pyro. Yeah, um, yeah. I, th I think it is. It's definitely cool because you know there's tracks where we have all these vocals or like four different guitar parts or keys or whatever. And the cool thing is like. I'm like, okay, well, I'm playing that live, but this is a cool little Dude, lick. And, I want to do that too. And so. if you want to talk touring, I mean, there's less people 
in the rig now you have room for a merch person yeah maybe a water boy tons of <laughs> ladies <laughs> yeah. all of the above whatever you whatever you feel like yeah so um yeah otherwise i think that just like the whole pandemic honestly kind of worked to our advantage because we've been in the studio um trying to put together everything just new music um put together a live show and figure out uh how the hell we're doing this so yeah so are you guys doing rehearsals then now to try and figure that out like for the future yes mixed with tracking editing producing just all at once engineering mixing mastering (laughs) everything else so and marketing yeah uh, definitely a diy uh group here so. powerhouse he meant, he meant to say powerhouse <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> well let me ask you something do you guys enjoy doing that on your own then i mean most people here we'll, we'll take this from a more um the typical outline there's someone that's assigned to do that at a label where they go hey um we need someone to do our marketing we need someone to help us with this we need someone to help us with that do you guys just rather enjoy being hands-on with everything as opposed to uh delegating that responsibility off to somebody else um depending on the release we still have been approached by an approach um different marketing companies and we've had help here and there small time but i i definitely like the control that we have right now Mm -hmm. yeah i think uh music wise it's great to be all in house um i think as far as like marketing and stuff like that like you know we don't have any like marketing degrees or anything like that but we do have like social media and you know we're just as good as anybody else but uh so like you know we've had some good like headlines and stuff with um just big media groups and stuff like that um otherwise it's it's music wise it's all it's all us just taking control so so let me ask you this so you guys have done a pretty good job with the music videos you guys have put out on your own like solo um, is this is what is this what's making people approach you guys now, or is it is it both? Is it the combination of the visual art that goes along with the audio art as well? I think it's both, and I think one of the cool things that we've always done with the video aspect is that no idea is off limits. Like we're literally, you know, we'll maybe get drunk one, two nights a week, mm-hmm. and uh, come up with a crazy idea. <laughs> I don't know if my mom's listening to this, so I got to be careful. Do you say whatever you guys want? Eight days kidding. a week. Yeah. Um, but no, no ideas off limits. And that's one of the cool things about this band. We wanted no rules. Yeah. So any idea you can possibly imagine, we can make it come to fruition. I, and I think that the crazier, obviously, the better. Um, we've, you know, gotten at some big headlines because of like the stupid things that we thought were at the time cool. And then we're just like, fuck it. We're, we're putting it in the video. We don't care. Like, yeah. You know? So so give uh, so for for people that are listening and that are watching that are unfamiliar with the visual art, why don't you guys go deep into that and explain like what exactly like pick one of your singles and go from there like as far as the visual aspects of stuff that may have been kind of risque but you still just said fuck it let's just do it oh okay um, <laughs> let's talk about our first single kill the things uh december 27 first song we ever wrote by the way time out you're bartending in that video and i was like Bar- <laughs> no, no 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 shit dude so like i was 19 i think i was i was working at the journal at the time and i was bartending like on the weekends and i was like i fucking used to work there i was like we've we've shared the same bar <laughs> yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a- awesome. Eskimo Brothers or something? Uh, yeah. Bar, bar <laughs> Eskimo Brothers. <laughs> also, also, fun fact: one of the only bars in this city that has a bartenders union. So, like, if really? like if you're there, like you have like you have a retirement set up for you, so on and so forth. You get an added raise every like six months or something like that. Like, or after your first six months. Wow. I only stuck around for a, for a short period of time, but at the same time, like I was working at the Journal, so I was like I was making a ton more money. So right. I was like, this is just like my fuck off money. Yeah. But yeah, dude, one of the few places in the city that has a uh, a bartender's union. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. That that whole oh, no. that whole venue is just fucking beautiful. I was um, I was I was thinking that maybe I should have stuck around after the video. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I don't know. I guess we'll we'll cover the quick top uh, lavish I- crazy ideas for the video. So we wanted <laughs> um, Dustin Diamond to play the role mm-hmm. of Harvey Weinstein, and we wanted a Trans Am. Got that. Got yeah. a like an old '70s suit from a costume shop downtown. We, we dressed. Oh, the one up. right yeah. down the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah okay, right yeah. Here. Yeah, uh, dude, was, I, I get I get a lot of shit from. Them. I forget what the hell they're called, but like, dude, amazing. they have such a great 
great it's, selection over there. Good price. Everything. Yeah, yeah. everything under yeah. the sun. Yeah. I wish I could remember their name. I'd give them a good plug in here. <laughs> and then uh, we got him to do um, like drugs in the bathroom. And then uh, <laughs> no, I mean I'm talking about for the video shoot. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So, sorry, sorry. And then uh, we had an, an amazing actress come up from Chicago. Um, she's been in a few things with Danny Trejo, and she um, was able to dress up as a nun and, and perform acts on Dustin and then uh, eventually stab him <laughs> mm-hmm. at the end of the video. I mean, it, no idea was off limits. It was kind of our, uh, our time to push the limits and um, caught a lot of heat from, from people uh, on yeah. that one. But, again, we didn't care. We're like, you know yeah. what? We got a lot of calls, and um, – I think the craziest uh, email or call that we got was when TMZ called us and they're like, Hey, uh, so Dustin Diamond's playing Harvey Weinstein. They're like, can you tell us about this? And I'm like, uh, dude, two uh. dudes from Milwaukee <laughs> took over the, the homepage of TMZ for a half a day. And like, yeah. that, that to me was like, okay, never again, question your ideas, do whatever <laughs> you want. So from that day on out, we're like, all right, we're doing whatever the fuck we want. Immediate yeah. positive reinforcement yeah. for yeah. me. That's, that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So, that that video that one specifically took a little time to release because um, I remember Tommy and I were talking about that mm-hmm. uh, maybe a year and a half ago. What took so long with releasing that? Were, were there issues? Were there legal issues with the Weinstein Company? Or I think um, <laughs> well, I think that particular video we put out um, quick. But what we did do is we had a second video with Dustin in it. Um, somewhat recently that we uh that we put out like a month ago and that one was shot um a while ago and we we had a bunch of uh different things going on with the video like we didn't like some of the scenes that we had and then even the song itself we were like well we felt like oh we're gonna speed it up we're gonna add some more flavor to our song so we weren't ready and neither was the video so that second video that we put out running out of time with dustin ended up being uh the last video that he actually was in with us before he passed away. So Mm -hmm. did you guys know what was going on? Um, I know it was pretty sudden while we're on the topic about him passing away. Was he aware of that, that he had lung cancer or was it something that was brought up at all? We saw some signs, but we didn't bring it up. We didn't, uh, we found out pretty much when everyone else did Mm -hmm. with that. So he never brought it up with us. Oh, Uh we just had a great time every time we were with him. So good to hear, man. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was one of those things, too, where he was, like, always super positive. Like, he'd, like, call us up and be like, dude, where are you guys? And we're, we're like, uh, we're at home. What's up? And he's like, let's go out and let's go to here. Let's go to there. And, like, and every time we were out, you know, obviously people would come up to him and be like, hey, man, can I get a picture? Or, you know, some people call him Screech and stuff like that. And, honestly, he was, like, always the nicest dude. Like, we never saw him get mad. Even there was times where you get, you know, those drunk people that are out on the street drinking or the mm-hmm. bars, you know, the festivals and they're a little overwhelming where I'm like, dude, chill, you know, but he just ate it all up and he, he loved it. So rolled with it. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was cool. It was cool to see. Cause like we never even seen him, you know, get mad or anything. He's always just like super goofy dude. Like, you know, yeah. You know, all of us hanging. So, so, so tell me for the presence or uh, tell me about the out of time video. So what was the premise for this? Um, well, yeah. again, crazy idea. We knew a dude yeah. with a DeLorean and we're like, <laughs> oh, hell's yeah, and dude. we're like, Hmm, yeah. put two and two together. Who can we get to play? You know, Doc Brown, of course we made the call. Yeah, of course. Yes. And, yeah. uh, we went and DIY all the props like off of Amazon and like all this crazy stuff. Like, Joey, Joey built a flux capacitor in I his did. basement for like a week or two. I did. He's like, he's like canceling all his plans. Like his friends like, dude, what are you up to? Like, dude, I can't go out this weekend. I'm building a flux capacitor. You don't in my understand. Basement. 1.21 <laughs> gigawatts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. <laughs> and it looks good. It and looks, it was it hot. Looks... So hot that day. It was like a hundred degrees in this warehouse. And like he doesn't wear a bald cap. And, and man, yeah. he was just pouring sweat the whole time. He didn't complain. It, it, it was, was pretty oh miserable. Like it, it was, it was not like your typical like video shoot. That was like, hey, everyone's having a great time. Like air conditioning and stuff like that. No, it was like, everyone's soaking wet, dripping. And we're, we just, we shot, we shot all day and well for a few days, but um, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> it was a crazy uh, shoot. So yeah, good to hear, man. Well, so so you guys get done with it then, and so you guys kind of have it sitting on the shelf. You, you redo the music, mm-hmm. you redo the the visual art for it now, and now that's released out on YouTube as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we put that out about a month ago, um, and uh, like I said, this is Dustin's last appearance. Um, so it was it was like we did a trip. We made it a tribute to him. Um, as you know, our friend and um, 
it just kind of caught all of us off guard, just kind of like it did everyone else. Yeah. So it was cool that um, we we got some of the goofy shots. So we got a lot mm-hmm. of the ideas uh, that he was doing were all his just just going with the flow, just, you know, like – He's like, hey, guys, what do you think about this? And he's like, oh, yeah, watch this. Okay, roll. And then he did whatever he wanted. And we're like, that's awesome. Okay, that's that's gonna, that's going in. You know, like, we didn't really have him, like, scripted for something. We're just like, dude, do you, you know, yeah. whatever you think. And then that's pretty much, like, all those ideas were pretty much him just going. So, yeah, I remember the initial concept for the song, too, being like, okay, our last band ended, you know, record deal ended. And we're like oh shit, you know, like we're running out of time, you know, like it's kind of like where that came from yeah. comes full circle to relate to, you know, Dustin. And it was like, well, he was running out of time and it all just, it made sense at the time. Right. So, yeah. So yeah. you guys were both in former groups before you guys got together and started doing this project. Um, yeah. Yeah. Why don't we start with you? Where, where did you start before you guys came to this project? Oh man. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, really quick. I, I, I grew up in a small town in Door right. County, Wisconsin. Oh, dude, and I came it up to there. came to Milwaukee to see. to uh, go to college for music at the lovely program they have at MATC, and uh, graduated from there. I met this guy and his band, and I joined his band. And um, after being in several bands around town, oh, you were in Dory Driver too, uh, uh, Maraschino. Oh, Maraschino. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, that segued into Dory Drive with a different okay. singer, and uh, we've yep. been playing music together for I don't want to date anybody, but close to twenty years, maybe eighteen yeah. years. Ten to 12 days yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we've been in advance yeah. for a long time seen the majority of the country together and yeah 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 i think it, it. What, what's kind of crazy too is like we haven't been on the road in years which is crazy because pretty much our whole lives doing music we've always been on the road that's the only thing like we actually like knew was like different cities different hotels different buses rvs whatever you know and like so it's crazy that now we're at a time in our lives where like we're putting all these videos and we're like, okay, well we're so used to like touring and playing shows and stuff that it's kind of a weird, weird thing. It's also cool that technology came full circle at the same time because now we can record ourselves and write completely independently. That didn't really exist before. We were always going to the studio and dropping serious cash all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I agree. It's like, we had talked about this a little off air. The, uh, like we're talking about the audio interfaces that I have and the speakers here, like it's all become within reach for any person to be able to build a home studio, like this podcast studio and like all the turntables and shit behind me. There's like a bunch of extra like equipment underneath the DJ booth and shit like that. Like all this stuff, like this room should have a bunch of years ago cost probably like around 50 K and now it's to the point where it's like, Oh, Oh. I can pay. I, I I can try and squeeze this in before the end of the year and try and fucking write it off of my 2020 taxes. (laughs) It's all about the personality behind the mic. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm slowly getting there. Like, honestly, like it's, it's one of those that it's, it's, it's difficult to watch. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. It's hard for me to watch me do this because I get so uncomfortable watching myself where I'm like, <laughs> Jesus, I'm like, if I say, uh, one more fucking uh, time, I'm yeah, going to yeah. blow my fucking brains out. Well, you're, you're your own worst critic. Like, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like people watching, they're just like, mm-hmm. they're, they're not analyzing you that much. Or the like bombs. You got to be careful. Yeah. Like, like, bro, like, <laughs> like, like, and then like, like yeah. and then bro. Yeah. And then, or, uh, fuck. Uh, just like, as long as you don't know, dummy. That's like a nineties thing. Wait, the no what? No, duh. No duh, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no duh. Really, really <laughs> dummy. Really dating. Yep, you know, yep. dummy. <laughs> really dating. Yeah, it's it's tough for me to watch this, but it's one of those two that it's been interesting to be able to like slowly take the notes and be like, oh, okay, here's where I have to improve. Here's where I have to improve. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can do this because initially when I started this, I didn't have an outline. I was just like, all right, let's crack some beers and see what happens. Right. And then I watched the first episode and I was like, this is fucking horrible. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. So what I ended up doing was I was like, all right, what did I do when I was in radio? I was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, I took notes. Like, I was kind of prepared. Like, I knew stuff that I could go through throughout, like, I don't know, my morning show and shit like that, stuff that I could do. Uh, the the big difference with this is is the fact that there's no music playing, so I can't go run to a computer and a printer and be like, what do I have in entertainment news? What do I have in this? Right, like, right. like I was saying before, like I just dog ear different articles that I see, or like I'll listen, like for example, with you guys, I'll like yeah. make sure I go through all the music a couple of times and be like, okay, and then like, especially with the videos, like I had to be able to go through all of them and be like, oh, okay, like this is cool, like this is cool, and I was like, oh, I was like, oh, you guys did a video with Stormy, I was like. 
we have homies, mutual homies. I was like, all right, cool. Stormy Daniels. <laughs> yes. I met. Yeah. Wait, time out. So wait, how did you guys meet her? Because I'll I'll tell you mine. You guys tell me yours. I met her through a friend, and uh, he's sitting right next to me. <laughs> fucking brilliant. I met him. Uh, I, I met him way back in the day. Who met Stormy? Yeah. Who, no, I'm just kidding. That was, that was a crazy line. Uh, no, I met her actually at a concert, and we were just drinking, have a good time. I had no idea who she was, and mm-hmm. uh, we ended up like I'm like having some mutual friends from like touring and stuff like that, and then we just. Uh, drank some Jack Fire and became friends, and then her, her and then, story's a little more uh, X-rated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, no, so, so I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this right out of the way. You yeah. guys can say whatever the fuck you right. want. I've told stories on here about me tripping on mushrooms on Fremont <laughs> Street. Like my brother yeah. over there has literally almost damn near dropped a mic where he was like, "You did what? Yeah. <laughs> What's going Excuse on? Me? Shut down this podcast. Excuse me, sir. I don't give a fuck yeah, yeah. what you guys talk yeah. about. Like if oh, you yeah. guys talk yeah, yeah. about anything at all, I, I don't give a fuck. I won, I won an award for a poem in the Dare program. That well, I, there you go, man. So, <laughs> that's never been talked about before. I, I have it at home. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't even know about that. The only thing the Dare program ever taught me about is that there's gonna be someone walking around with a suitcase full of drugs and I was like, <laughs> I wanna meet this person. Dude, it had like the clear plexiglass, <laughs> like the samples. All the samples. And I was like I was like, so that's what the real stuff looks like. I, Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just I just learned that Explosion. I just learned that someone's making a lot of money. It ain't me. Yeah. And I was like, and I was like, so my thing was, I don't know if it was for you, but I was looking at, I was like, so if I steal this suitcase, yeah. I'm gonna be everybody's home. <laughs> Couple kids. I, I gotta get this plexiglass off, yeah. and like they're they're like literally pointing out to you, like these are lewds, man. I'm like, what? it's 1990 something. Nobody's doing lewds yeah, anymore. Or like they'd have like a little baggie with like a syringe, like this is heroin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or um. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is uh this is cocaine and then as soon as it came up to the weed i was like we're drilling a hole in that motherfucker i'm like we're gonna get that shit out <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then we're gonna go to webs this uh this afternoon we're gonna hit up some fucking some lunchtime fucking stoner action wasn't it like eighth grade or something so like i had the dare program like we had i don't know about you guys i had a re- like a like a was it renaissance officer is that what they called him and like he always had to do the dare program yeah, where it was like yeah. where like he would come into your health class and be like i'm here to talk to you about the dangers of drugs like scruff mcgruff yeah <laughs> <laughs> some dude dressed up he was like kind of half leaning you're like this dude looks like he's on smack right now <laughs> yeah. he's like i brought mcgruff the crime dog here if you see his eyes they are completely yeah. bloodshot yeah yeah we know what he's doing i don't know if you know this but it's a hot seller uh like on the internet is is the dare shirts Oh like, yeah, like they're they like people are starting to reprint them, and, like put them out. Like I was like, I, don't know, I wonder how much you can make off of this. You know, like I don't know. I've I've seen the ones where it was like, um, where it was like dare something like whatever the slogan was yeah. about like something against drugs, and it was like, no, seriously, ask me about drugs. <laughs> like <laughs> it's like dare, and it's like, no, seriously, ask me about drugs. <laughs> I was like, oh, I definitely want to pick that one up. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's you wear that one to a concert, and you find you make friends for concert life there. Yes. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Friends for yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, but um, we were talking a little bit off air about some of the stuff that we'd been doing um, during the lockdown. Like for me, built this. I was doing some streaming, so on and so forth. You were explaining to me you were doing the master classes as far as like all the audio engineering stuff. Yeah, man. I've personally wanted to do all the storytelling one. I think I'm. We were talking about reviewing these. I think I'm horrible at telling stories, but I definitely want to do them. How is it doing those master classes? Like as far as like how they're designed to be able to go through them, how easy are they are to pick up? Like, is it a week program or is it like you do like six hours at once? How does that all work? It's kind of like Netflix. If you want to binge, you can. Um, certain chapters, certain artists, like like Timberland, for example, you got to see how he writes his songs and how he might not be so technically savvy, but he's got a couple of guys that are behind him and he'll mouth everything like dung, 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 dung. It's, yeah. it's amazing. I'm like, dude, this guy's creative. He's so creative. Um, I took the, uh, the one that is on like hostage negotiation. That's really cool. Uh, I took the one from dead mouse. Um, the one from Armin van Buren is really lengthy. Mm-hmm. And if you're not a logic pro user, it might get lost, but, uh, the way he constructs his songs and the way he works in his flow in the studio, Pretty cool. That guy has uh, been doing it for a long time, as you know. But, yeah. Uh, the way he um, just automates everything, the way he records a vocal, the way he runs his bars in MIDI, and the way in the way Dead Mouse records, he doesn't have any musical knowledge really. He just he's a computer guy. Like he he does it by like graphs. Like 
his MIDI, like he'll build chords right on the computer, click, 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 click. He's constantly clicking through the so, night. So <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna take a step back here and I'm gonna apologize for cutting you off. Um, some of the people that are listening, I, I one of the things I've taken note of is the mm-hmm. fact that I sometimes have to go through and explain this so that everyone understands it. Now, for people that don't have a musical background, sure, um, explain measures as best as possible in the comparison to like a guy like who Dead Mouse isn't doing like that, like right. the the typical like the typical standard format of writing a song where it's like verse, certain number of bars, chorus, certain number of bars. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, like we say, a measure. Let's just use four four time signature. You count to four, right? One, two, three, four. That's one measure. And if you have an eight-bar phrase, it'd be eight of those bars or measures. Mm-hmm. Uh, most phrases in dance music, electronic music, when you say are eight, sixteen, thirty-two, yeah, they're kind of structured like that. Whereas if you had a rock band like Tool, you might have an odd time signature, you know, measure where you're counting to five, and then you count to four, and then you count to seven, and you smash them all together. That's why their music sounds so crazy. But in electronic music, you think of it as blocks. That's what I like to, you know, picture like a line, mm-hmm. another line, another line. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so hard for it, me to explain to. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, I was like, shit, maybe I asked you yeah, a hard question. Wait, what's yeah. going on? So, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so I guess I guess to explain as best as possible is that it is the block. So it's yeah. 16 bar, 16 bar, which is a 32 bar. And in that and in that space, you can do what's basically a pop verse. And then you can go to six. So it's another 32, 32 of chorus. Or like if you want to do a build, like a 16 bar bridge. Yeah. So on and so forth, where the the drum roll that you'll hear leading yes. into the chorus yep. and then the chorus comes in hard. That would be like a 16 bar bridge where that's how technical writing can be through a guy like mm-hmm. Armin Van Buren. Uh, and then a guy like Dead Mouse will just be like, no, I'm going to write like a 64 bar intro and just slowly climb it up right yeah Yeah. build and when you get into the performance aspect and you're you know a a musician on stage and you have a click track going in your ear or beep beep whatever sound you prefer counting you into all this you're not hearing what the listener is hearing you're hearing your own mix with that click so Mm -hmm. you're you're you know you're doing a job you know so that's one thing that took me a long time to get used to playing live as a drummer like if i'm off the entire group is off yeah. yeah. With any so tracks. you you keep you make sure your time's that tight when you're yeah. playing drums. Hundred percent. Oh shit, dude! There aren't a lot of guys that do that. Like, yeah. the otherwise click... it's all off. Yeah. <laughs> so it's weird because a lot like a lot of drummers have like if they're not used to recording mm-hmm. that right. click track throws yeah. them off because yeah, they're yeah. they're like I can't. Right. I can't like it's no, well, like can't. sex with a condom. Like yeah, I can't yeah. be free. <laughs> I, th- I think the thing too is like there's segments if, that you can take it. If up. you use like tracks, like you have to do to a click, otherwise shit gets really crazy all of a sudden you know this is coming on the wrong time like if if the drummer's not in sync with the click everything's off it mm-hmm. could be a natural disaster on stage so oh yeah especially yeah. if you have stuff that's time to <laughs> yeah. come in at certain yeah. parts yeah. yeah i guess so, that makes a lot more sense yeah yep definitely i never thought you see i've never thought of that i still think of it as like the old style version where it's drummer basses sure. guitarist yeah. so right. on and so forth right. vocalist right. or like right. rhythm guitarist so on and so yeah. forth where it's like I don't really take those things into account where it's like, oh, shit, you guys have to be on time with that. Because at a certain yep. point, this is measured to come in yeah, at that point. The, the pyro goes off at, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. I've like for me, like as far as like those DJs that have that stuff that's like timed, like it throw like I had I had a conversation with a, a promoter a bunch of years ago, a good friend of mine, Pat Coles, where he was like, dude, he's like if you were doing a festival, he's like, you would still like make up because everything that I do, it's a lot different than what you guys do. So what I do is like, I kind of have like an outline of like stuff I want to do within the first 30, 40 minutes just to get myself warmed up. And then I just kind of go, let's hit the ground running the old David Lee Roth style. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, let's just see where the room's going. Let's see what kind of people come in, what kind of people are, are hanging out and getting into this. Who's vibing on what I'm doing. And you throw a couple different things out there to see what works. And then you go, okay, that's working. Those group of girls over there, they're dancing, they're digging this. And then I run with it. Sure. Um, but it's such a free form where I'm like, I like, I have no idea where I'm going to be at midnight. I have no idea where I'm going to be at 1 a.m. It's literally just me just kind of hitting the ground running. Dude, Everything's you should, improvised. You should dress like David Lee Roth for one Dude, of your sets. <laughs> I do not have the codpiece to wear that spandex. I'm what you call... <laughs> 
There are certain people out there that have big dick energy. <laughs> I have sh- medium dick energy. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's cold out, oh, don't no, no. Then it's no. just I got baby dick energy. <laughs> oh, man. Those Wisconsin winters. Dude, fuck it, dude. When it's when it's below freezing, I'm like, God damn it, I can't wear sweatpants out in public. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Like I told you, man, the, nothing is off limits. The room just climbed like 10 degrees. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, the lights. <laughs> oh, yeah. These, these, for, these fluorescent lights yeah. do a lot here. Or um, the tequila. Oh, fuck yeah. Do you, make, do you want more? Do you need more ice? I'm yeah, good. dude, I'm I need good. some. Oh, you, you, you want I, ice? I didn't plan that out. Are you switching do you want tequila? One? Sure. All right. So we got a TikToker in the house. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my girlfriend, Callie. She's in studio and hanging out with us Thank today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, at yeah. some point, the phone had fell off. <laughs> <laughs> like you guys kept going and I just, I heard it hit and I was like, yeah. ah, shit. Yeah, I, dude, like, uh, it's fine. It's, it's, it's rock and roll, it's right? <laughs> we, were, we were dancing too hard. It's yeah. the new technology of rock and roll where your shit it's, is your phone dude, that being goes like dudes in a band for so long like when we first entered the world of tiktok we were like oh how, wait what is this yeah, and like yeah. as a band i think more artists should be on there it's like an imperative it's it's, it's a good promotional tool yeah. just like twitch but at the mm-hmm. same time you have to be willing to be defeated by girls twerking and yeah. shaking their ass you don't stand like, a they'll chance. have like a uh, hundred thousand views and then like you put out something and it's like yeah like a thousand views or something or you know it's like oh because she has a nice ass. We can shake it too. It's not like that. <laughs> it uh, it's it's funny. It, it's the one. It's the few things that women have the advantage in, um, as far as like anything goes. Like, right? What the fuck are you laughing at there for? You Tom- want? <laughs> Tommy so, can get close, man. Just well, that- <laughs> hold on. We're gonna address this for a second. Little sassy pants over here is flipping me off. And and here's here's the exact reason why. She is a professional fighter. All right. Ooh. And yes, she is a brown belt in jujitsu and she snaps necks and cast checks, but I will still hit you as hard as fuck if you keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> we're, spar- we're sparring in the morning, just so we're clear now. Has, has I'm going to prove this point. Has there ever been like a live fight on the podcast? Because I mean... Uh, Not yet, but there's about to be. Someone referee. Over <laughs> someone over there is fanning the fucking flame over there. But Royal no. Rumble. So Rumble advantages. you listen, you are more flexible and... You're faster. Okay. And you have a better gas tank. Yeah. And she's fa- she's <laughs> fast as fuck, dude. I was holding pads for her last week. And, or no, last, last week before. And she's sitting here hitting me with these speed kicks. I was like, God, she did that in like three of them in like one second. I was like, what oh the my fuck? God. <laughs> no, she's tough as hell. Where the fuck? Did, where the hell were we going with this initially? Um, we somehow say, yeah. how Wait, the we, fuck did we end up on the topic of you? I think we were talking about margaritas. Oh, I remember what I was going to do. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to put that... Dude, do you want to put that down for a second? Can you grab some <laughs> the, that square ice and uh, no, no, Rand, you're all good. Like we, we we have an extra we have an extra in studio today. Okay. Can you yeah. grab uh, can you grab one yeah. of the rocks glasses and that square ice? And bring that in. You know what? It's uh, a party now. Do you Gra- have round ice or something? No, no, the it's in the rub. I get it. Say what's up, dude. So that's the producer over there. That's Randon. He, he's not even paying attention. <laughs> Rock and roll, we have uh we have in-house tiktok going on off camera in-house. <laughs> or in-house in-house yeah. not to segue of any of anything here but the uh the tequila um actually spawned the writing session for the single we just released two days ago barcelona yes okay yeah. we uh we had a lot of tequila and we found this loop have you ever used splice yeah so that came with uh so a subscription came with ableton yeah, when i bought that yeah it's awesome. amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, we found a loop on there that we kind of liked, and we wrote, like, the bass idea for it. Then we changed all the music. But, um, yeah, dude, we were pretty hammered, and... Uh, it's like 6 in the morning. We <laughs> started fictitiously speaking about being in Barcelona and then things that go along with it. I mean, there were lines that never made the, the final track, mm-hmm. the verses, but it was like a seven-minute version of the song, and we had to condense it into, uh, what... 320 or something so yeah tequila yeah i think uh yeah i think there was definitely uh some good stuff that came out of that weird drunken debacle that we were in but like for the most part um there was a lot of stuff that was like oh my god what what, what was the next day You're like son of a bitch that was <laughs> that's ridiculous we can't we can't really and we, this is one of the first songs we really wanted to put a like a dance beat behind like mm-hmm. kind of like a michael jackson feel 
and uh, I think we so what you that, but. so when you when you write then um, do you write with the intention of like for example like most dance music is one twenty to like one thirty ish somewhere around there it, did you do the outline where you're like Let's do this around like 115, 120 and see what happens. We were mindful of it. Um, we changed it later. I think it's like 118. So it's a little slow, but there's guitar in there. So the ice has arrived. <laughs> It'd have been great if a glass arrived too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. she, she did one of these. She was like, I got it. You, I got it. <laughs> no, no, no. I dropped it. <laughs> you got to put you got to put the ice cube in your mouth and then do a shot of tequila and then it just melts in your You mouth. heard it here first, people. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, where the fuck did she get this ice from? Dude. <laughs> yes. The ice queen. Ice queen. <laughs> the ice queen. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be a cold place in here after me talking shit to her. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's going to be like, my name's Ike. I think Ike. she's asking you a question, actually. I, I have no idea what the hell she's saying. She always yells at me from other rooms. And, like, I'm half... I don't know if it's the same for you guys. Like, I'm half deaf from, like, playing for 20-plus years now. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, I can't hear you over the headphones and the uh, the running water, whatever the fuck I have going on. Yeah. <laughs> so what were you yelling at us about? Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Grab yourself one too. It's a yeah, party yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Thank a party. you so much. Yeah, it's a party. I'm driving later, not you. I'll mix them up. It's fine. I'll mix them up. Tommy, Tommy's bartending, I'm bartending on the fly. By yeah. the way, side note: one of my favorite fucking times of you bartending was this had to be three or four years ago. Yeah. I hit you up last minute. I had like a Wednesday off, and I saw Sublime was playing at the rave. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was like, dude, I'm coming down. I do remember that. Sublime dude, that's top. Dude. So, Number one, great fucking show. I love the fact where you're posted too. So it was like on this kind of like near the side of the stage. It was like yeah, perfect yeah, view. Yeah. But you were like close enough where it was like it was enjoyable. Sure. Those top five drunkest nights I'd ever. <laughs> like I woke up the next day and like I had the worst case. I was like, holy fuck. I was like, how much did I drink last night? I like woke up. I was like, I think I'd gone out with like a hundred bucks. I woke up with like three dollars left. I was like, how the fuck? Yep. I think that was the exact same night that uh, you had parked uh, across the street at the hotel, and so did I. And I was walking you back, and for some reason, I was like, dude, can you, so what if we got attacked right now and someone did this to me? And you're like, no, no, here's what you would do. And like, so we're in the middle of the fucking parking lot, of course. and you're like showing me like some martial arts shit, and I'm just like, okay, either people are going to think we're really fighting or something, something bad's going to happen. <laughs> And then so like, but we were both like intoxicated and we're like, oh God, like this is not going to end well. And like, I think like you probably are used to like, you know, like actually like fighting people and stuff like that, you know, like sparring or whatever. And I'm not. So like, I think you like, you know, smaller guy like me, I think you're a little aggressive. And I was like, damn, I was like, dude, what are you doing, man? I was like, I was oh, like, bro, I have, I have what I have, what I've defined as sloth strength yeah. when I'm drunk. Because it's it's one of those that like I don't I don't know my own strength at times, and it's one of those two like I've all, it's one thing when I'm in the gym. So yeah, to to kind of segue a bit is for example training with Callie, like I have to take it easy because she's a I, I outweigh her by a hundred pounds. Sure, and it's one of those where it's like I can't throw the same type of punch, the same type of kick. Yeah. That I would throw at someone my own size. Sure. If you're my size and bigger, congratulations. You're getting like a 50% fucking punch or kick or whatever. Yeah. But it's one of those two that you have to balance it out by not gassing yourself out. There's a lot that you have to take into account where you're like, how long's the round? How long's this? So on and so forth. Yeah. Um, with with when I'm drunk, that's completely out the fucking yeah. window. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I, I was like, I'm like, like so. I'm I was like, like, I was like, how far is he gonna go with this? I was like. I, uh, now I feel like I'm in a real fight. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> so like what you want to do is you want to get yeah, the elbow yeah, right yeah, under yeah. the chin. Like, he literally like has his arm around me and I'm like being choked out in the parking lot. I'm like, wait, this is not what I was talking about. I'm Why like, is his hand <laughs> on my wallet? <laughs> 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 I'm being mugged. <laughs> I'm, she always complains about how heavy my arms are. I'll roll. Throw it around me and I'm like, no one, dude, you're not on a mic. No one can hear. <laughs> Yeah. I don't I don't think she got that like you're, no one can hear you when you're not on a mic. So what she was saying off mic was I roll over in the middle of the night and I throw my arm around her <laughs> and it's it's the equivalent to another human being being on her cuz I have like apparently really heavy arms I'll and really like I'll just like be like and I somehow make her unconscious with this little arm just, <laughs> just hanging on her. Air. 
<laughs> well, I can relate, honestly. Uh, <laughs> Sloth strength. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, do I need to go to a doctor after this? What's going on here? You might have. I was like, <laughs> you might have had your back realigned for free. So, <laughs> but have, have you ever tried it though? Have you ever done jujitsu? Have you ever done uh, when, I, when I was in like second or third grade? I think I had a yellow belt, and then I was just like, that was pretty much it. <laughs> I did You're a like uh, peak I peak did, like, performance. <laughs> I did six months of Brazilian jujitsu oh, in nice. high school. Yeah, where'd you uh, where'd you train at? The YMCA in Sturgeon oh, Bay. Nice, dude. Nice. Wisconsin, but. You, dude, you definitely got to pick it back up. Like, uh, there are all a ton of great schools. Um, it was incredible. I, like, honestly, like I, I recommend my place just because I think it's the best still. Mm -hmm. But there are a ton of great guys in this city that are different lineages. Yeah. So, um, I was listening to a podcast. Uh, I think it was Rex Friedman. He was talking with Brian Hall, and he was talking about like the Marcel Gracie. Like, there's tons of different like, um, um, tons of different programs that are out there. And all of them have like their own little niche of like, this is what you're going to play. Like my last coach was, he was a real arm bar guy and he was like, okay, this is what you're going to play with. Like if you miss the arm bar, you can roll into this. So the transition would be arm bar to triangle to, and you would keep going down a line of different transitions you could do. And it changes from different lineages that you train with. So it was always, so it's interesting when you hear about like other programs that are out there of like, Hey, this is how their program's set up. Like, this is what our quote unquote bread and butter is of our program. Mm -hmm. Mine was always like for myself, like I'm, I'm a fucking heavy dude. So like I'm anywhere between 200 and 220 pounds. I hate being on my back. So for me, it was like, I run a really good top game where like I go for Americanas, uh, Kimuras, like arm bar from, uh, from not necessarily a mount, but from like side control where like. If a person's flat, like I'm laying across them like this and I'm attacking what would be this arm right here. And then it's like, wait, you're attacking their thumb. Uh, nah. <laughs> I was trying to, like? I was trying to keep you guys with me in case you guys didn't know what I was talking about. But yeah, I'll fuck a thumb up, bro. You want some of this? Dude, well, you don't want this smoke you, when that thumb action's involved. If you pop their thumb out of joint, I mean, it's not that. It's not Damn, that, dude. It doesn't feel that good. I mean. yeah. Well, dude, well, that brings up a good point. You were talk, talking about this earlier about hobbies. I'm like, we work on music every day, so we don't really have much free time. But maybe I should take a day off and do some jujitsu. You know what? If you got like an release. hour a day, that's a, like, literally what it is. You come in, like let's say class starts at 5 o'clock. You leave your house at 4.30. You get there at 4.45. You stretch out a little bit, roll yourself out. Get yourself nice and loose, loosened up. And then you go through your warm-ups. When the class starts, you go through whatever technique you're working on. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, you're drilling for a little bit. And then it's live roll. So, you know, if you got an hour and a half, two hours a day that you can just give up and just be like, all right, I'm going to do this. Like, instead of, like, for me, I, like, I always think of it as, um, I'm going to cut this and this and this out of my day so I can go sure. do this for right. a couple hours. So the dedication. What not yeah. to do during your day. That's a whole other topic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to know what you can cut out to make room for the good stuff. Right. I Usually it's for me, it's I usually uh, skip off uh, or I push off uh, bong hits and booger sculpturing. <laughs> <laughs> Just made enough time. I literally was waiting for you to drink Just on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just got that one in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, that's good. No, but seriously, though, it's it's one of those things that I try and do less TV. Like I probably yeah. this is probably the time in my life that I could be watching the most TV because I'm, I'm the least active right now. Like I'm not producing music. I'm not DJing. I'm not doing anything. But like one of the things I try and do the most is I was like, OK, I have none of these things to do. Go go to the gym at least an hour. Yeah. And then try and get through it. Although our new coach has been shout out to Jacob Rodriguez. That motherfucker's been killing me. Like our burnouts are insane. Like where it's like, um, yeah, I think we did like 70 where it was like, you have to do 20. She's, she's whispering over there. 75 steps where we had to do like 20, 20 sips in 60 seconds. And then you get the rest of the minute off. Like, so like, let's say you hit it in, you hit your 20 sips in 30 seconds. Sure. You get a 30 second break. Clock goes off again. You have to do another 20. Then you have to do another 20. You have to do another 20. And then you have to do another 20. And by the end of it, I was like, I remember we were training last week. And I looked there. I was like, we're not going to fucking boxing. <laughs> we, we we were like, we went in with the intention of doing two hours. Dude, and I was like, fuck. That's way over the six minute ab video that I have at home. <laughs> 
I was like, we're, we're going to go get food, and then we're going to go take a nap. <laughs> Fuck this, dude. <laughs> but yeah, so for, for her and I, it's it's nice where it's like we, we have that. Number one, it's it's hard to find other people that, that understand what both of us do. Like, for me, it's a hobby. For her, it's her life. Yes. So it's one of those that, like, I try and be very supportive, and then, like, anything that comes up, I'm usually really understanding of it, where she's like... She'll have issues where she's like, I don't know who to train with because I don't, she's like, she gets really concerned about being gooned. And like, I obviously take that into account. Like anytime I train with a girl and I'm like, I don't want to goon this person. Like, I don't want to like, Wait, what does okay, that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. For the fine folks at home. Yeah. What oh, does, no, like, uh, yeah, what so, is that? so think of gooning as, so she's small. I'm huge. <laughs> so I'm not throwing, oh. I'm not throwing stuff and I'm not pushing her around the mats and stuff oh, like gotcha, that. So gotcha. okay. it's me not trying to, um, abuse my size. And mostly just work Gosh. technique. Can you mentally goon somebody? I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's actually seen it a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so there was a there was a I can't remember. Were you working or were you off and just hanging out with me at a concert? We ran oh, into your nah. ex's boyfriend. And, oh, he, yeah. ooh. and this, this I, do, I, I do remember this i think yeah go ahead. so this dude was trying to fuck with tommy and i was like hey buddy i was like take a hike and he tried like he was he's a well-built guy i'll give him that like he looks like he knows his way and around parker's the talking about me yes <laughs> tommy is is huge if you take that shirt off there's <laughs> yeah, yeah. abs on yeah. abs on abs like you don't see it but there's some serious pectoral definition i'm on the cover of muscle magazine no big deal weekly <laughs> 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 but to go back to the story this dude was just gooning the fuck out of him and i was like dude i was like take a fucking hike whatever and parker was drinking and i was i was heavily intoxicated <laughs> and rather than me and I think Tommy had said, he's like, don't get into a fight here. And I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm not going to. So I started making fun of him. I was like, hey, dude, I was like, I was like, I know your arms are really big. I'm like, are you even able to wipe your ass? Like, I just started making fun of him. And then like, he was like, that's not funny, bro. And I was like, oh, oh. I'm like, you had to get like one of those like French things, to, like wash your asshole or just, yeah. <laughs> or do you have like one of those sticks? Like I just started making, dude, I just started clowning. The it was escalating. Him. It was yeah. escalating. And then like, you could tell he was getting really pissed. I was like, hey, bro. I was like, do you get this one a lot? Have you seen my beach ball? It's like this big. It might have went that way. And like, you can just see the dude's face like turn around. I was like, all right, we just won this time. He was like, let's go do some shots. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mess with my friend. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's mental gooning, dude. I would I just great. fuck talk that's shit. Nice. And I'm like, go ahead, do something. I have the I like entire it. confidence in the world that this fucking dude is probably yeah. going to blow his gas tank in like 30 seconds. <laughs> And more, mostly, like, him just turning right in the face. And I was like, let's get the fuck out of here, Tommy. Fuck this guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember a weird stat from that that uh, time in my life that 70% of all fights end up on the ground. Street fights. Yeah. So, is that legit? Um, mostly. Um, I'm trying to think of the, the most recent one. Yeah. Yeah. The last one I was in. Uh, I ended up on the ground with that guy. I ended up... Uh, I don't, dude. Like I said, I don't give a fuck. And here's, I'll, I've been mean to say this disclaimer. Um, I haven't told a lot of these stories, but like, if you're on the losing end of this story and you feel any sort of way about it, there are a ton of tournaments coming up. There's actually a kick light tournament coming up in April. If you're somewhere near my weight class, I'm happy to meet you. But yeah, so <laughs> the this this was in uh this was in Madison, and uh, there was an individual who was asked to leave, and he didn't want to leave the property. So I went out and I just double checked on the staff and I come out there and, and one of the guys is a former linebacker Okay. and he has this dude hanging off his back and he's like, he can't reach him because he's so big and he's just trying to shake him off. And I looked at the guy that was out there with him and I'm like, My do goodness. you, I'm like, do you plan on doing something about this? He's like, ah, he's fine. I'm like, he's wrapped around his neck. So I grabbed the dude by the pants and I grabbed him by the back of the neck and I pulled him off of him and I literally just shoved him. And I was like, dude, I was like, go the fuck home. I like turn around to the two bouncers. I was like, go the fuck back inside. Let's go. And I took a look at the dude. I was like, don't walk forward. I was like, I'm like, I don't work here. I'm like, I'll fucking end you. And so I, I have my I'm facing him as I'm walking back into the door. And as I turned, he jumped on my back and I was like, you <laughs> fucking moron. So I literally I. I shimmied him forward so that I could get him in front of me. And he still had like his hands behind my, my, my head. And I literally just, I stepped in, dropped a knee and I picked him up. Like I shot in on him, picked him up and I dumped him right on his back. And immediately I took full mount, 
tuned him up a couple of times and I grabbed his arm and like grabbed the arm, went to full arm bar and I had the thumb and I was like, hey, dude, I'm like, I'm going to break your arm if you don't fucking stop. And the other bouncer comes up. He goes, uh, Parker, that'd be all well and good if you didn't knock him out when you took him down to the ground. I was like, what? Oh, he, he goes, not- he goes, Parker, you didn't hear the sound that came out of that guy. I was like, Hoo! <laughs> <laughs> just completely knocked the wind out of him. I looked at him. I was like, oh, that fucking guy's sleeping. I was like, ah, oh, son of a, I was like, everyone get inside. I was like, give me a new t-shirt. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna close my tab. They're like, you don't have a tab anymore. They're like, thanks for that guy was annoying as fuck. <laughs> nice, yeah. So if you are the person that was in that story and you feel any sort of way about it, feel free to DJ, <laughs> to uh, to email us here at uh, the Zero Cool Podcast and we can rectify the situation whenever you like. Not all heroes wear capes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's always been one of those two that there's this anytime I've ever gotten to that where it's like I've let I've let that happen. There's that moment of regret afterwards where I'm like, eh, should I? I'm like, should I? Uh. <laughs> And, and it's one of those things where, like, I ask, I always ask the people I'm around, I'm like, I stayed in control, right? And they're like, yeah, they're like, that guy was a fucking asshole. I'm like, I'm like, did I go over the line? Like, because there's, right. there's other instances, like, the one that comes up more recently was uh, last summer we went out. Um, it was me, Dan Hicks. I don't know if I should be using everyone's full names. Um, <laughs> Bill Gates. I was, <laughs> I was hanging with some I was hanging with some bartender friends and yeah. we ended up at a venue and we're all we've all been day drinking. We had all been like bombing up and down Brady Street. And one of the venues we ended up at, we walked in, we knew the owners, we knew the bartenders, and we're like, hey, get us some shots, get us some drinks, whatever. And there's this guy, he's like, Hey, come do some shots with me. And we're like, mm, all right. Well, like, well, I think we initially were like, no, no, we're good. We could tell like this dude was annoying. We didn't want him around. Excuse me. And, uh, oh, I remember this going out. Uh, so we ended up like turning him down and he's like, he's like, really? No, 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 do some shots with us. We're like, oh, fine. We'll do some fucking shots with you. You got to leave us the fuck alone afterwards. So this dude orders like a round of shots and he starts handing them to the people next to us. And we're like, we're like, okay, no problem. Turn around to the bartender. Like, can we get our own drinks? It's perfectly fine. And the group is like, no, 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 no. We don't want this jackass hanging out with us either. Like, here, like, take the shots take back. Them. Yeah, so he ends up buying shots for the entire bar. We end up doing the shots with him, and he ends up, as soon as he slams a shot, he slams it, on, like, he takes the shot glass, throws it on the ground, smashes it, and is like, now get the fuck out. And we're like, huh? like, who the fuck are you talking to? Like, you were just our best friend 10 seconds ago. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like breathing heavy and he's talking like the macho man. Like he's cutting a promo for like the WWE. Like, like, you're going to leave right now. I'm bigger (laughs) than you. I'm stronger than you. And I'll go right through. That was a direct quote, by the way. (laughs) And my friend Omar is like, dude, chill the fuck out. Like, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, hey, man, like, we don't want any fucking problems. Like, just chill. Just, just chill the fuck out. And he literally grabs my friend Omar, who's a lot smaller than me, and just shoves his head right into the wall, like while he's dead eyeing me. And I was like, "All right, now you're gonna die." Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, ended up, I ended up picking this guy up, oh, geez. slammed him into the ground, and like my one buddy who was in the bathroom, he's like, "I heard you slam him," and he's like, "I was peeing while it was going on." And he's like, "I pissed all over myself." He's like, "I started to shove my dick back in my pants." Like he's like, "I knew you were fucking peppering this dude." <laughs> He's like, I come out, he's like, I'm watching you, like, literally just drop elbows on this dude, and just, like, you're knocking him out, waking him up, knocking him out, and, like, finally, he's just, like, he grabs me, he's like, Parker, stop, and, like, stood up, and I was like, I'm so sorry, he's like, it's fine, they they stood the guy up, his nose was kind of sideways, and the only thing that came out of his mouth is he looked at all of us, he's like, you guys are poor sports, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, you started this fight, you asshole, so we end up leaving, and this is where I was going with this. We end up leaving. We go to another bar and I'm talking to them about this. I was like, yo, I was like, I, was I out of line with this? Like, I was right that this guy was a, like, this wasn't going to end well at all. And they're like, no, they're like, it was perfectly fine. Like, yeah. you stopped when, you, when we told you to stop and like, it's done. And I was like, okay, I'm like, but there's always that regret afterwards where I've always been like, was I right when I did this? Like, right, right, right. And, that, and that's the only thing is that like, yeah, it's great to be able to, to, to do a lot of this shit, but there's a regret that comes typically after it happens, right. unless it's professional. Tommy knows exactly what I'm talking about. He does. I think he does. <laughs> 
He's the regret he's in, part. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, I thought there was a time that you came to mind, and I was like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> No. But uh, no, nah, dude, jujitsu, all that shit, it's fun. Like I was saying something the other day to Cali, where I was like, I usually just train with guys at my level, like, uh, like blue, purple, sure. brown, black belts, like higher ups and guys that are professionals. And it was weird for me to actually train with guys that were underneath me. Sure. And it was one of those things where like I went in with the same mentality where I was like, oh, these guys know exactly what they were doing. And then after a couple of seconds, I was like, oh, I was like, you guys are at where I was at this period in my life. And I remembered yeah. like yeah. training with, I remember training with like different guys that were those higher up guys that just were so slick and I couldn't figure out like how to get around them. And I was just getting tagged left and right. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, this is exactly where I was. This is, th they're at the same point that I was in, yeah, in It's got to feel career. really good to help people too. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I so. stay away from coaching so much unless it's something that's just real drastic that i see that someone's doing like don't do that. Uh, yeah like <laughs> if you hear something musically you can step in and say that we're like mm -hmm. i'll notice like someone's throwing a kick and they're coming right in i was like that's how you eat a right hand step out mm -hmm. step out keep your range there's there's rules to it the same way there's rules for music like four four signatures so on and so forth and there's all stuff that you have to kind of abide by, like keeping your range, so on and so forth. It's really a f dude. It's a blast. I think you guys would fucking dig it. Tommy definitely, dude. <laughs> you look like would. you got a lot of aggression. You have like a headband tied around everything. Yeah, like yeah. I come, I come in. Uh, Is there a dress code? Can you dress like you're from the '70s or something? Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> That'd be great, fucking, dude. The fucking leisure suit, Larry. Fucking tracksuit, dude, dude. He does this like crazy flying fish move, like because we've stayed in like <laughs> millions of hotel rooms, right? Uh -huh. Oh, that's the old. He does a like, French can... French fish. We call it. Yeah. Like, like right when you hit the his bed, his whole body jumps up in there. Comes <laughs> out on the bed. I mean, it's something. It's a sight. Maybe if you're lucky, one of these days, <laughs> we'll put it on TikTok. <laughs> I didn't even think about that actually. Oh, I think about it all the time. <laughs> dude, it's already queued up. Dude, that dude, that's your 100k hits right there, dude. You gotta hit him with the salmon, bro. <laughs> French fish. Get a little, give him the old French fish. Give him the old fresh French fish. Couple of girls booty twerking in the background, yeah. dude. That's all you need, bro. You know, like his lineage, like he's French Canadian, so it all makes sense. <laughs> Unbelievable. La Brosse. Holy crap. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's going back. We got we got way fucking off topic. Yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> no, we did. no, it's perfectly fine. It's all good. It's all good. I uh I totally like a admitting to a assault in my podcast. I, I try and do it at least <laughs> once or twice a podcast. Statute not of limitations. Not dude. that it matters. Dude, this happened last summer. Oh shit. And that dude's bigger than me, so fuck that guy. <laughs> Not now, and again, if you were that dude that got your ass whipped by me, please email us. Tournament's coming right up. I'm looking for an opponent. Um, <laughs> and I'm heavy right now, too, so I actually might be in that guy's fucking weight class at this point. Oh, I'm, snap. I'm fat as fuck, dude. <laughs> I'm like too tweezy. Really? Yeah, I'm 220. She's like 130 right now, so yeah. <laughs> so we're in like the same weight class, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be real honest. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of 4 a.m., peanut butter and jelly sandwiches oh, wow. with this one. Yeah, well, sometimes uh, you can't say no. Dude, but <laughs> here's what it is. We right? found keto bread and I was like, oh, What's I was like, oh, dude, I'll hook you up with some before you take off, dude. 30 calories? Dude, it's amazing. 30 calories, Whoa. like what, maybe one net carb. And I was like, fuck yeah. As soon as we, as soon as she found out about it, she was like, she called me immediately and was like, guess what I just found? I was like, I, I don't know. Like, Life changing. Uh, uh, What'd you find? She's like, I found bread. I was like, what the? F I'm like, bread's everywhere. She's like, I found keto bread. I was like, oh, okay. So she was like, we're making grilled cheese. She came over and it was like, I think 10, 11 o'clock at night. And she made like 30 different grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> There's like eight different cheeses, some of which didn't actually melt as we, we came to learn like, that oh. not all cheese is made to be melty. Oh. Oh. There is some sort of like goat cheese, like cranberry thing that she came up with or like that she found. And she was like, I'm going to do a hybrid of like the cheddar, the provolone. And then I'm going to put this like goat cheese, like cranberry, yeah, yeah. whatever the fuck it was. And she's like, it's not melting. I was like, and then we eventually looked it up. I was like, oh, there are certain cheeses out there that aren't melty. What? <laughs> News to me. Like like feta. Feta doesn't melt. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So like this that was one of the cheeses that doesn't that doesn't melt. So <laughs> But yeah, we, we went all out. We did like we did like four cheese, grilled cheese with like bacon and like avocado and stuff like that. And Man. dude, she's got a whole process for it. Like you put it on a grill and then you put a lid on top of it. It's amazing. Wow. 
keto bread. Jesus. But anyway, the keto oh, bread. That keto bread. Dude, the keto bread is the shit, yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> no, no, that's awesome. I mean, outside of the fact that it's like packed with fiber. So it, yeah. <laughs> if, if you have a loved one that you were seeing, maybe take the dog for a walk for a little yeah, bit. Okay. Yeah, you have to be careful what you eat on the road, too, because you can yeah. pack it on and then you get to perform it. I'd see the energy, but keto bread sounds yeah. like a. But also, a like eaten in every city like you know like there's like different restaurants you want to try out or the like, venue like, feeds you yeah and you're like oh dude i don't know man like it looks so good like you know you, you gotta kind of spur sometimes but at the same time it could destroy you dude yeah. that's one of the hardest things like when i went to kansas city there was yeah. so much good fucking barbecue yeah. and like dude yeah. you talk to the staff to like and it's an ongoing argument where it's like no you don't go to that place you go to this place and you're like well that place was good let's see how the Okay, this place is really good too. And then the next night, the staff's taking to another place at like three in the morning. They're like, yes. and then the the really goofy part about Kansas City was there's like there was like this uh, I forgot what the name of the venue was, but like if you like knocked on the table, like they hooked you up, and then you had to like throw a five as a tip at the end of it. And I was like, oh shit, dude! Like I was eating like. Oh I ate so much fucking barbecue. Barbecue. I came back. Like I left. I was like, I was one ninety. I came back. I was pushing two hundred. I was like, God, I ate a fucking shit ton when I was there, dude. It's hard to breathe. Yeah. yeah, I'm all winded when I'm back in the gym. I'm trying to warm up. I'm like, I just, give me some oxygen. Just give me some meat sweats. Give me some barbecue sauce. Hell yeah, dude. I was sweating vodka and fucking barbecue sauce when I came back from that one. Dude, it was rough. The the early years of me training and like. And drinking was just like I think back to it, and I'm like, how the fuck did I do that, dude? I'd go on fucking week long benders in Vegas while I was playing, and I'd just be like, be like I remember there was a, oh my mom's not listening to this. <laughs> well, I called her. I called her because of this. Are you gonna be listening tonight? <laughs> no, she's not listening. Um, so, uh, well, she she knows the story. She's involved in it. So I had called her. My, for those of you who don't know, my mom's a nurse, and uh, at the time she was an ER nurse, and so I called her and I was like, "Hey, so I have an issue," and she was like, "What?" I was like, "I woke up pissing blood." I was like, "I, I don't know like what's going on here," and she's like, kind of going through like the nurse questions, and it comes to like, she's like, "So have you had any unprotected sex while you've been out here?" I was like, "No, no, no, no,", no. <laughs> and she's like, "Well, that kind of eliminates this, this, and this." She's like, "Well." how much have you been drinking? I was like, uh, or no, she had asked, how much water have you been drinking? And I was like, I don't know. How much water would you per se is in a bottle of Kettle One? And she's like, with the melted ice, you you maybe drank like two or two to four ounces of water. I was like, I drank eight ounces of water in the last 24 hours. And she was like, you're probably going into kidney failure. She's like, you need to call your physician. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay. So I called my physician. He's like, yeah, that's exactly what this is. He's like, where are you staying? And he's like, we're sending you to this hospital right now. And I had to get a bunch of fluids like pumped into me and shit like that. Like, um, why did I start telling this story? (laughs) (laughs) Barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce. Listen, this is, this is what you get for, for enhancing my ADD today. So it's intense, man. So, but that's but that's partying, that's eating, that's drinking, like the road life. The road life. Like I remember, I got cut off in a Vegas bar at like ten in the morning. We we're waiting for the for the Packers game to start. Yeah, yeah. And yes. I remember the bartender looking at me and goes, "Excuse me, sir, you're cut off." And I was like, "And like it's one of those that's like me and a couple of buddies that I known from Milwaukee." And I was like, I, "Am I being an asshole?" Like, yeah. like I'm. Like I was just having a couple of beers, not really thinking any of anything of it. It was like dollar Miller lights and you got a hot dog. And I was like, dude, that's Vegas for you. It's Wisconsin. I mean, we are huge oh. Packers fans. And it's funny everywhere you go. Yeah. Normally you can find a Packer bar oh, yeah, yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So we didn't know about it. So there's a couple of them. One, there's Rum Runner uh, out in Vegas. There's another one called the Draft House in okay. North Vegas. Um, but yeah, we had decided that we were going to be around like Fremont Street to watch the game. And the bartender cut me off and he was like, he's like, he's like, you've drank 10 beers in like three hours. And he's like, you also ate 10 hot dogs. He's like, I'm cutting you off for your own health. (laughs) He's like, so you don't have a heart attack here. And I was like, hot dog limit here. And I was like, dude, and my initial response was. Yeah. My initial response was, I was like, listen, dude, I'm from Milwaukee. This is like a happy hour to me. Yeah. This is like a happy hour warm up for me. And he's like, oh, wait, you're from Milwaukee. And immediately his tone changes. Yes. He's like, can I get you a shot, sir? And I was like, yeah. wait, what? what? He's like, 
He's like, we are well aware of people from Wisconsin and their tolerance of drinking. He's like, my apologies. Let me buy you a shot. So he gives me like a rocks glass, like up to the line of Jameson. And I proceed to like keep drinking. He goes, listen, fair bet. He goes, I'm not going to let you eat any more of these hot dogs. I was like, well, can I take them home with me? He goes, you can still drink. He's like, you just can't eat any more of these hot dogs. I was like, well, I don't want them to go to waste. I was like, technically, I've earned them with e- with each empty beer can I've turned into you. So they were one good. One. They were good. They were good. No, at, at, you know what? At like 10 in the morning after yeah. you've been playing and drinking all night, it was just one of those. I was just like. Fill her up. Yeah, I just kept eating them. Is that I don't Joey know. Chestnut? Yeah. <laughs> He's around the corner. Just Parker Chestnut. Fucking me like, Parker Who's this guy? Chestnut. Who's this dude invading my fucking turf, yeah, yeah, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Giving me that that uh, that weird fucking side eye, like what's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching. He follows you in the bathroom. Dude, Hot dogs falling out of your pockets. Like, have you ever seen how those dudes prep for that shit, dude? No, but I, I like I, the dunking in the water thing to decrease, you know, the bun in your belly and your intestines. Whatever they do. No, what do they do? So Hot like dog he, eating uh, competitions. So those dudes like literally stretch out their stomachs. So what they'll do is oh, is they God. force themselves to overeat to stretch their stomach out. Like there was a. I want to say it was a 30 for 30 that they did on like Joey Chestnut and the, oh, I forgot what the, the other guy's champion's name was, but there was like the ongoing rivalry between the two yeah. of them where he was like, yeah, dude, he's like, I eat like six pounds of salad a day just to stretch my stomach out. And he's like, I do it in this cer- certain period of time. Like those guys have like a regiment of shit that they do to make sure that they're like more than prepared for this. And he, and they talk about the fact that like he kept losing to the, I forgot what his name was. But, like, in that challenge, he kept losing to him, and it was, like, it fucked with him mentally for fucking ever. And then finally, like, when the dude retired, he's like, I, he's like, I just beat everyone by, like, a landslide now. Dude, <laughs> whenever you don't think you can do it, that last bite, think of Joey Chestnut. And what he has <laughs> had to overcome in his life. But, yeah, dude, those guys, those guys are, like, hard, they have, like, an athletic regiment that they do for stretching out their stomach and getting themselves wow. prepared for that. And I think... Don't quote me on this. I think they fucking blow chunks afterwards, too. Yeah. Oh, just to really? get it all out of their system. Yeah. Well, I'm like, dude, that much processed meat. Yeah. That would hurt probably a lot. Well, I don't, what's the worst part? Going down or coming back up? That's a, that's a <laughs> yeah. true question right We're there. We're talking about hot dogs here. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, people. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so... So what you guys have planned for the future as far as, like, the live music stuff goes? Are you guys doing, like... Uh, gonna try and do shows first after this whole warm-up like there's a couple of such such a tender area right now as you know yeah um with what we're trying to accomplish being all original um we don't know all we can do is what we uh, love to do and and perform so like we're putting the the show together and we haven't made any formal announcements but there are a couple things in the works but we don't really we're just getting ready for when the storm it's time then it's like okay we're ready everything's ready to roll i mean things have started i mean you see it on facebook all the time you see people like booking tours now and playing out here and there i mean the local scene i don't think ever went away per se yeah there's a couple diehards out there and some cover bands locally here but um for what we're looking to do it's definitely i think we'll be back online what do you think by by fall right Uh, you know with everything that's being said right now they're saying by the fourth of july that this whole herd immunity thing between everyone being immunized and so on and so forth should uh should kind of have us back to normal but the fact that i I guess there's there's positives and their negatives that i look at out there Mm -hmm. the fact that most like uh the ethnic festivals that go down at the summer fest grounds um fest italiana stuff like that they're canceling and they already moved summer fest to september um that concerns me because I thought for sure that we would kind of have this thing kind of wrapped up by yeah, the beginning yeah. of summer or at least, you know, wishful thinking, hope, hoping. Um, but there's also positive sides to it, too. You see that the Milwaukee Bucks are, I, I think, at 35 percent capacity. Don't quote me on that. Right. Um, where they're letting a certain number of people into the games. And I'm hoping that kind of overflows into uh Brewers opening and, in, day. Yeah, opening day. and yeah. into concerts as well, where it's, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that's out there that you can do. You can do rapid testing. There's a lot of options if you really want to do it to kind of, I guess, scapegoat the insurance issues. Um, but I haven't seen anyone that's that's stepping up, at least in this city, to mm-hmm. 
take that initial lead on it. And the other side of that too is it's such a heated debate that you have people on one side that says everything's too soon and the other side of that is we're not moving fast enough with getting reopened. What's the right answer? Right. I have no I have well, no idea. For, yeah. for Tenlo, the right answer is just to be prepared. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. all we, that's I mean, all we're yeah, trying yeah. to do right now. Yeah. 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 We're, the Boy Scout motto. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yep, pretty much. But yeah, I'm uh I'm for myself, I'm looking forward to it. Like I wanna I wanna be able to play outside. I wanna be able to do anything. Yep. And I don't know, for me, whenever. Uh, I've enjoyed yeah. this entire year off. I miss yeah. I miss playing to a live crowd. There were short little little snippets where I was able to play like back yeah. in September and October and then they shut it all down again. But yeah, I remember um one of the uh oh, New Year's was a joke. <laughs> like I, I played on New Year's, but it's it was one of those that like I was playing and people were trying to have dinner and I was like yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> I didn't feel like yeah. they really cared for me. And I was yeah. like, to be honest, I'm like, I, I don't know if I care to be here either, but <laughs> whatever, man. Like, they wanted me here, the so gig. be it. And, 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 and I tried. And I honestly, I did. Um, it was kind of cool. Like, I remember at one point, like, uh, someone brought their kids over and they were like, hey, my kids wanted a picture with the DJ. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And they're like, little tykes. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's really cool. I was like, thanks. I don't think I played anything you guys know whatsoever because I think everything was at least, uh, I'm assuming they're like six or Dude, seven. Baby yeah. shark. Oh yeah, baby shark. <laughs> you know, we laugh about that now. We're going to be out at some club 10 years from now and that's going to be considered Dude. a fucking throwback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Classic Crowd's rock. Get, yeah. That, that's going to be oh, yeah. some sort of fucking throwback. 96.5. <laughs> <It's like, yeah. laughs> do you don't even get me started on that? I heard Green Day on there the other day. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah, yep. Dude. That was that was a liver punch yep. and a half. I was like, am I that fucking old now? It's like uh, Green Day. Green Day, hap- really? It's happening. Or um, I heard Stone Temple Pilots on KLH and I was like, that's that's fucking it, dude. I was yeah. like, I remember. Was it the core album? I think I bought when I was in elementary school. I love, that album. Were, oh, I love that album. That opening on that, the opening on yeah. that, where uh, I think Scott Weiland, the recording on that, Scott Weiland sings through a pickup, and he's just like, <laughs> I am yeah. smelling yeah. like, <laughs> and then it just kicks in with that. So doo, good. Doo, doo, yep. doo, doo. <laughs> Did you hear that? He's got a good voice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like all of you know what. Here's the thing: all of Stone Temple Pilots was amazing, especially those first three albums were just completely yeah. out of sight. And it's. Is he is he nodding yeah. his head over there too? No, no, no. Oh. The Leo brothers, man. Yeah. I, I was rocking out to him. I was like, I was like, he, oh, yeah, Ron. he's really yeah. in it, so I just want to give him a little. He's in the zone. Yeah. <laughs> I forget, like you guys can see yourself behind me. Yeah, like on the monitor. I didn't even look until now. Can yeah. we get a sponsor plug? We can do a sponsor plug. Did I totally? Did I bring him up before. You did. I oh just, yeah. I, I've always wanted to say that. Yeah. <laughs> If uh if you enjoy this podcast, I gotta pull up the email again. So so is the big screen mean it's live and then the small screen is the preview one that preview live. Yeah, so once oh, preview I, I so, change it by so, so the small it. screen's the small screen's the live one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Towards the end of the podcast, like I finally figured that out. <laughs> it's like how long have we been going? I'm just curious, like, cause you, uh, we're a no hour sense of time. Hour fifteen. Cool. But someone said sponsor plug. So uh yeah, if you support the, if Joey you support Zach. this support this podcast uh hit up joinplayboy.com you can click the link uh support zero cool podcast and subscribe uh there are a couple options i think you can do a trial membership you can do uh a month you can do a year you can do a, a lifetime membership i think i took a re- review of it the other day so it's just like no i was looking at the membership i was like oh i was like i wonder <laughs> if i support my own podcast i thought you but- reviewed the latest issue or something like no, I think I, like, I don't even know if they're completely digital now. Okay. Like I would imagine print. I don't know if they still print like the actual magazines at all. Tenlo follows uh, them on Instagram, so ah. that's good. I think I do too. I think I still do. Is it weird when they have like a throwback and you're like is that weird they look at that like you know like is that strange? That like something from like 79 or 80. Oh, I was thinking of like stuff like within like our life like our lifespan. Like I was thinking of like uh, Jenny McCarthy, um, Pamela. I almost said Paula Anderson. I was like, "What the fuck was I thinking?" <laughs> Pamela Anderson, and it's just one of those things. That I'm just like, I was like, oh, I remember this like when I was like in high school, and then now right. I, I look at I'm like Pamela Anderson, then Pamela Anderson now, and I'm like, it's so weird to see how people have aged and stuff like that. Right. Jane McCarthy then, Jane McCarthy now. Like right. it's so weird to like see how like over your own lifespan that you've seen someone age that much. Or reverse age. Oh, yeah. 
somehow <laughs> Cher somehow gets younger somehow. and younger. Like, I don't know how the fuck that works. Dude, how old is Betty White? She's 99. <laughs> 99. There's, there was a thing Come about on, it. Come on, Betty. So much. Triple digits. There was a thing about it. Like, Morgan Freeman just did, like, a lead-in for her. That's I think, incredible. I, I don't know what the hell that was on. I saw it on Reddit, and it was like Morgan Freeman did the voiceover. And I'm like, if you're going to have someone's 99th birthday, yeah. Morgan Freeman's the man. We might have to use her as inspiration. We're uh, going to write a few summer jams coming up here in the next month or two, and I have to put her up on the wall. Dude, you you put Betty White in something. You guys fucking call me up, dude. I'll hold a boom mic. I'll, <laughs> All right. I will find a job for myself to do. <laughs> Betty White. <clears throat> He's a pop icon. <laughs> dude, she outlived all of them. Like, I actually, my backup. So, we're talking about shirts. Before, ADD, man. Just roll with it. <laughs> we're talking about t-shirts before. This one's the, um, what is it? The Exorcist with Robert Smith. The that. backup one was, uh, I pulled it out today where it was, um, the Golden Girls. So it's like, but it's the Golden Girls and it's the Savage Lease where it's like classic, bougie, ratchet, savage. Oh. <laughs> and like it lists all the Golden Girls. I think it was a meme first, but like I saw the t-shirt and I was like, I need that for DJing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just learned about what ratchet means uh, maybe a few months ago. Maybe maybe a year ago, but it's only a year old, right? TikTokers, you let us know. Oh, the, the Savage single? Yeah, just like the word I, ratchet and like what it refers to. Oh, like everything's ratchet. ratchet. Yeah. No, I think. I had to explain bougie to someone the other day, and then I also had to explain to my mom what a fuckboy is. We got to get you a mic or something, because no one can hear <laughs> yeah. you talk about fuckboys. <laughs> fuckboys. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, what, what's the I other? Told my mom, I had to you told your mom about bougie, bougie, and fuckboys. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We got to get you a mic or something. This fucking half inch shit isn't working. Um. Where the fuck was I going with this? I don't even fucking remember now. We're talking about fuckboys and like yeah, yeah, ratchet. Yeah, here we are. Here like, we are. Honestly, Sunday evening. So yeah. honestly, dude, it's one of those where it's like lingo changes where it's like I my buddy's kid was always like swag. And I was like, what? What do you keep saying? Where he was like, he would say something. He'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Swag. And I was like, what, what? the fuck are you talking <laughs> dude, about? <laughs> and then they would just pepper it in. And then you'd be like, yeah, dude, swag. And Dude. I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck you're doing. Like, he's 13, 14 years old. I'm like, I have no, like, I'm out of touch and I don't get any of it. Right. And like, we haven't put a lot of the, that terminology into our lyrics yet. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like Dude, a. it's out there, man. It's out there. It, it's a, it's a one size the fits all. One yeah. size fits all right now. So hit up those TikTokers and be like, we're, give we're us. We're trying some- to appeal to all ages here, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Betty White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, we got to get you a mic. Betty <laughs> Betty White, if you're listening to this, listen to our music and put out a TikTok to it, please. <laughs> you just send it off to her and be like, this is the dance. This is what you got to do. Yeah. Get it choreographed for her and have her just knock it out of the park already. The, what, fresh fish? What? French fish. The French <laughs> fish. I don't think Betty White's doing the French fish. Uh, she might blow a hip out. <laughs> that might be bad. But she might. If she was in the background, like, jamming out. Maybe if we awesome. harnessed her up or something. I feel like if she yeah, we <laughs> and yeah, and serious crazy. like I don't know if you're getting picked up on the mic at all. They can hear you on TikTok, probably yeah. clear as day. Yeah. But without a mic, nobody can hear you. <laughs> we 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 we're getting side comments from Callie down there, I who's think, who's handling their TikTok <laughs> media right now. I think I think she's like picked up like this much. I think that's what our media man said over there. Oh, media that much, man. yeah. <laughs> media man. Yeah. But yeah, dude, Brandon. <laughs> in the past, our, our bands have been based out of like Nashville area or the Midwest. We are happy to embrace Milwaukee with this band and just claim yep. it. Like yeah. we've lived here for a long time, so that is where this band is from and where we're coming out of. So we're really happy about that. That Beautiful, choice. Man. Nice to be at home base. Yeah, for dude. This this one. The four one four. So you guys are doing a lot of your own like DIY recording. Like, so what do you guys have set up at home? Because I think we had talked about Splice and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So you're using Ableton. Walk me through it a little bit. Okay. Uh, Logic Pro X is our main DAW. Mm-hmm. We also are familiar with Ableton. Si- sidetrack. Uh, Digital Audio Workstation. That is the interface that they're using to write their music on. Yes. Logic Pro X. And the interface that gets all of the uh, instruments into the program, I use a UAD Apollo and some of their software that comes with that, along with a lot of third-party plugins, which would be your reverbs, your auto-tunes, your synthesizer sounds, 
Um, we use Splice, which is a Splice is a sample community where everyone from the world uploads these amazing samples, and you can pick and choose whatever you want out of there and use and tweak and do whatever you want with. And it's endless. And being in the studio and being creative, like we both, I get lost with time. And it's my favorite place to be in the world. If I could, I would shut all the doors and lights off for months and stay there. But can't do that. You might, I don't know, might not yet. I go crazy, but <laughs> you can get lost. You can easily get lost in a fucking rabbit hole of yeah. yes. of splice, yeah. where we had talked about Dude. this a little bit off air. Where like you can you can find samples and you're like this sample, and then like the even crazier part is you can look that up in certain keys too. So like if you're yeah, writing yeah. in yeah. a certain key, yeah. it makes it so much fucking easier for yeah. you. Um, one of the things I had said was one of the things I, I, I first started learning on was acid pro. And at the time, I think they were just giving it away on their website and they had this really great website that they had set up. Um, I think it was acidplanet.com and they'd have like these remix contests where like you would have all the stems for like major artists. You would have it for like Madonna. Like there was one where like perfect circle released all all the stems for Judith. So really? like you could have, Wow. Oh, it, if you guys want a copy of it, it's still on the computer. I'll give you sure. a copy of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the one that dude, the one that I probably use the most, I did a dude again. Uh, the one I probably use the most is that reverse symbol from gravity kills guilty. I oh, use that yeah. for writing for everything, dude. Um, like those samples specifically were just amazing. Like there are so like, you would get lost in the amount of samples that they had there. And then on top of that with the splice thing, like, dude, if you want to take any of those old tracks and remix them, like, dude, you can just layer it, layer it, layer it. So much fun. I, I think too, like the cool thing with like splice is like, we'll hear like a tone or a sound and we're like, let's not maybe use that sample, but let's emulate that. And let's try to get close to like how that sounds. Like for example, like a guitar lick or something like mm-hmm. that. It's like, okay, well I play guitar. Like let me find something that sounds similar to that. And like, write my own riff that's you know not exactly that sample or whatever Mm -hmm. um same thing with like a lot of the key stuff that he does it's like it gives us an idea to start something and it's not necessarily like a sample from splice but it's more of like hey that sounds awesome let's do our own thing though with that so you know like it's easy to segue with like with writing and stuff like that yeah and it's it's so crazy the way it is now where it's like there's so much inspiration you can hear on that now or that one little sound inspires like yeah 100 yeah. percent. and you're just like yeah. that one sound yeah. made this mm-hmm. fucking track whether it's an fx sound whether it's a fucking bass line whatever the fuck it is mm-hmm. you're like holy like it's- dude we have a back catalog of like maybe hundreds of ideas that no one really knows about so like you'll hear us, us put out a single we're usually working on the next maybe two or three after that and then we have a back like suitcase full of hundreds of ideas and then voice memos on your phone maybe like six or seven hundred ideas not embellishing at all yeah so just, like no. when, the, when the day comes for <laughs> people like, do you have any other ideas and be like oh well sir yeah yeah <laughs> I'll tell you a story here <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but it's just getting around to, to finalizing it to where we're happy with it so no i hear that like nice. from yeah. a from a dj perspective there's always like some sort of remix idea i have yeah. where it's like this song is good but we can take this and make it better like the Stuff I was playing for you earlier, yeah, like, awesome. like gear. Oh, I never even fucking plugged that. I totally forgot to. My bad. Uh, we'll talk about it in a minute. I was I was playing them a little bit off air. Of uh, I got I got enlisted to do Jägermeister's Behind the Shot mix. This is the third time I get to do it, and the theme is diversity. So they were asking me to come up with stuff that doesn't typically go like that wouldn't go together. Typically, you would find that would be pop friendly. Like they literally described it as they go, we want Slayer and Justin Bieber and put together. And I was like, okay, that in a dance club, that really wouldn't work. But I was like, I'm, I'm getting what you mean. Mm-hmm, right. So it's it's a, a mixture of, of new school being mixed with old school, pop being mixed with EDM, uh, classic rock being mixed with hip hop and so on and so forth. Um, and I was playing from a little bit off air, like a sample of it. And it, it's so much fun. Like there's... I think the opening is teach me how to Dougie versus Drake and shit like that. <laughs> but going back to what I was saying before was there's an outline of probably 45 tracks, something like that, that like I had been working on at one point and I just go, I have no idea where to go with this. Or I don't know if this would work or um, it would bug me. I don't know if you guys ever get this too, where it's, this sounds too much like that track that I just did. Kind of. Yeah. 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 
or it's just like, no, I'm just going to, if I ever circle back to this, yeah, maybe one day. Yeah. Or um, do you guys ever do this? Do you guys ever take like um, like two song ideas and put them together on one? Yeah, we've done that before with uh, verse melodies and uh, yeah. things like that. So yeah, There's times where we'll be like happy with like three parts of the song and then we're like, this part sounds like a completely different beast. And we're like, throw that over here to a different session and then boot, you know, keep going with what we're doing, you know, so. It happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Dude, it's crazy where, where like you start out with the intention of writing a song of being, you're like, oh, this is where I want it to be. And then all of a sudden you end it and you're like, that it's is not even. You start here and you end up over there right. and you thought your end point was here. It's, it's a crazy, it's crazy how, I don't know, how, how beautiful it can be that it just completely, you can go with it and it, it ends up as just being fluid, um, art. Fluid, right. fluid beauty, if you will. Right. And with our newer material, we're trying to figure out, kind of like, we're not trying to figure out, but we're we're curious to see where we sit and where we belong. Like Barcelona, for example, we had sent to a listening group, uh, the A&R from uh, Atlantic. Atlantic, Atlantic and yeah. all, some other people, and we were a part of this really cool Twitch program where they listen to unreleased demos, and they gave us some really positive feedback with it, um, especially, you know, this, a couple people in the group said it sounded like, um, like Daft Punk. And this is like two weeks ago, and we're like, what? Okay, and didn't expect that to, to be thrown out there. But definitely experimenting with some vocoder sounds moving mm-hmm. forward and a lot of interesting dance sounds and kicks. Is that something you guys want to do moving forward then? Or? Yeah, trying to change it. Not change it, not trying to change it, but it's developing into less of a rock sound that yeah. we are so familiar with um, and going to, to a different place with I, it. Yeah, I think being like a two-piece too, it's like we realize like, yeah, we're not going to have like the live big kit and you know like all the instruments so it's like it just some electronic stuff especially being in the studio all the time just naturally starts happening. It's like okay, you know, the synth or keys or 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 this, you know, kick or whatever it is or this beat um just kind of like naturally happens when there's only like two people involved, you know. Yeah. Um so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. We're excited. Yeah. So then is that a let me ask you this because there's a there's a lot of stuff like for example like I get stuff sent to me all the time where I get like instrumentals and acapellas sent to me where it's like these artists are up for people like remixing this are you sending stuff out is it something that you kind of have an idea for or something you guys are open for or do you just want to send a certain DJ your stems and see what he comes up with <laughs> we as of right now we uh, yeah. have not sent anything to anyone but we would love to work with you exclusively. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> that was oh, yeah. a binding verbal agreement. Yeah. <laughs> you got to hear first people. on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that we'd love to work with you on Yeah, we're yeah. we're pretty open minded with, you know, music stuff too. It's we don't have we again, we haven't set boundaries. We're not like, "Oh, we have to do this and we have to do this like and it helps whatever. us both out." Yeah. 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 I mean, well, no limitate like, no so. having everything kind of open's got to be like really fun to do where it's yeah. like for example, if you're a if you're a band like Perfect Circle, they have sure. a certain sound that they they want to do. There really isn't any growth outside of that where you guys can go, sure. "Hey, we just did this, this, and this. Fuck it, let's do this. Let's yeah, let's dive down the uh, future house samples or right. like tropical house or yeah, yeah. or yeah. Uh, or what's this and let's let's try this. That's gotta be fun to just constantly be doing different music. What are you guys listening to lately that would like kind of help you like push your your mind? Like, what would give you the idea to write something like Daft Punk that people would say that kind of sounds like Daft Punk. Hmm. Is there anything that you guys are listening to at the time or? I think a lot of it is just like samples and like us writing with an idea. Like we're not necessarily like we hear something and we're like, Oh, we should, you know, try to like emulate whatever's going on or whatever. It's just kind of like he'll have a melody or a guitar line or, or, or drums or something. And then we just kind of roll with that. So like, we're not really like specifically like, listening to one thing like you know we hear everything yeah. that's going on right now and you know that kind of stuff um but you know everything from like you know like 60s to current you know it's like musicians everything just wide yeah. wide wide range just like, like you um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean everything yeah you're a dj so you you oh. don't have like only a specific type of genre that you listen to you're like oh i know like um, rock i know like hip-hop i know you know i really like else. like black bear uh his approach to lyrical writing I'm like, wow, man, like, this guy is saying some just different things that in a different way. Yeah. Huh. Um, who else was he just working with recently that it kind of put me back in my seat? It was him and 
I think he was he just did a track with the MGK. Yeah, yeah. So those that, guys are awesome, man. Yeah. Like, and it's it's one of those weird collaborations, <clears throat> like especially with MGK, like it's not anything new. Yeah, it's like, like it's it's but, it's him, but, but it is it, new. It's it's a new sound. Like yeah. with him, he's always kind of had that weird like. Well, I, yeah, I think I ran into you at one of the MGK shows. Yeah, where, like we're up in the balcony. Yeah, I got to meet him actually one night w- with with that. He came and over to my pink ba- guitar. He came over to my bar, put his uh, guitar on the bar, and he's like, "Hey, he's like, dude, do you know where catering's at?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "I'm like, well, uh, one of those stories. You're like, yeah, go down this, take a left, go right, go straight down. You know, like, yeah. amazing." He's like, "Dude, can you show me where catering is?" So I'm like. All right, so all these like other like female bartenders saw me like walking with like MGK like down to catering or whatever, and they're like, "What the fuck is he doing?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Dude." So what were you gonna say? Oh, I, what I was saying was this: is that if you've ever seen him live, he he was a, mostly known as a hip hop artist out of Cleveland, but his shows felt like a fucking rock concert. He had a DJ, he had a drummer, and he played guitar, so on and so forth, and it was crazy. And then to see him do what he's doing now, kind yeah. of progressive, where it's like. It's almost an ode to that uh, that Blink One Eighty Two sound. Yeah. Where it's like, um, how do I put it? The um, that writing style. Where it's like that that the, how the do, pop punk style. Well, it's of. it's big chorus, but it's yeah. a real simplistic, like almost one chord, like just plucked during the verse. Yep. Yeah. Like I guess that's a, the kind of the best way to describe it. Because I'm thinking of uh, my bloody Valentine. Yeah. Sure. Where it's like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. going through the yeah. the verse just and then that, the yeah. chorus it's a build into and then the just chorus. Just call me at some power chords and yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. in. Get yeah. Travis Barker on the track. All right, here we you're go. done. <laughs> I, I don't know if he produced that track or not. I think he played drums on it. He played this. drums on yeah. it, but he was producing really? a lot of shit back in the day. So back in like two thousand nine, he did like kind of like a almost hip hop album. Dude, he did a track with like Rick Ross, Swizzy, and like <laughs> Lil Wayne. And like I used yeah. to play it and people are like, What? Cause it was, it's a rock hip hop track, Yeah. but like everything he did on that, then he did like remixes. Like you remember throw some D's on that bitch, <laughs> the track. What about you? Kids yeah. on TikTok. <laughs> he did like a rock. He did like a rock version you of that. It? He did a, a Steve Aoki track uh, cool. where it was called misfits, but it was like Steve Aoki doing almost like a hard house. And then like he was doing some scream vocals over it and, Travis Barker's just fucking going off the wall at like 138 beats per minute. Dude is absolutely like, oh, yeah. I'll That's give crazy. you guys, I'll give you guys a cut. Co- or actually I'll have to give you guys shit. I'll just send you the link on Spotify. Like go. dude, yeah. took, take a Whatever look Whatever you uh, do, just don't send it in Dropbox. Yeah. yeah. Fuck a Dropbox. Dude. We're anti Dropbox here. <laughs> we were talking about that off air, dude. Yeah. Google drive. Um, yep. If you guys are unfamiliar, they do not sponsor us in any way. But Google, if you want to sponsor this shit, I will take that money. <laughs> Google Drive. Google Drive. Yeah. Uh, Ten bucks a month. You have unlimited space. I literally just I flood my. Uh, That's all we use as well. Yeah, yeah. I put all my backups of this podcast on there, yeah. and then there's constantly like like stuff that doesn't fit on that computer anymore. So there's like a folder of like tracks I will never finish uh, ever. <laughs> also, side note: don't hack our Google Drives. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. no one knows what your email is, dude. <laughs> yeah, so for me, like, I don't use any of my, like, my official emails, like, any of the stuff that's listed out there. I have, like, a, I have, like, s- yeah. stupid one that I use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like, no one would ever guess what the fuck Don Mikowski, oh, Don, Don Mikowski, <laughs> greatest goat, Don Mikowski goat at, uh, yeah. hotmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> French fish, one, two, three. Chris Jackie, uh, kicker, uh, 81. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. But yeah, those uh, that's the big key to it is that you just any like any email that you use publicly, never use it for any of that stuff. And then that's like how you yeah. kind of skirt around it. Where like sure. if you have like um, if you have something that's listed on your website, yeah. The fuck are you talking about over there? We're no, I didn't. I have headphones Dude, on. Before and you're not being picked up on before the mic. we had the luxury of affording such grandeur of space. Google Drive yeah. and Google, we would open uh, like 10 different diff- email accounts. Like, Dude, we had, yeah, we had. And it would relate to the project that we were working at that time. Yes. <laughs> to load up the free 15 gigs in the drive. Whatever the name was, that was like a, the email or whatever. And then we were just, we kept throwing shit. So Everyone does that now, right? A they million have like different junk emails. email account. They yeah. Have, yeah. You know, sign up for this, but use this one. Yeah, but Don't ever ours know. is by the project. So there's so many. Like, it's just like all these random things like saved. Yeah, sure. I want to be on your email list. Give them that shitty email. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, dude, it makes yeah. it makes things a million times easier as far as like, especially with working multiple computers for myself, where yeah. it's like, it's easy to access all that. Mm -hmm. Where like yeah. all these like the production computer and my main laptop are all set the same way, where it's it's binary, so like I can have Windows and Mac ring at the same time. I just use a parallel, cool. and all the all the stuff that I use for writing is all Windows based, like, even though. Ableton's fun. I'm just so used to Acid yeah. and using Vegas as opposed to uh, Final Cut. Like Final Cut's on there. It's cool. I've yeah. used it a couple of times. I do like Premiere Pro. That's the Adobe I... one. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are all my iMovie people at? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my extent. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Premiere Pro is like what I like first started out on, and I'm not by no means am I like you know a whiz or anything like that. But I'm decent. Where I prefer to like fly around on that rather than. Do you pay this? Is it a subscription or is that like a one-time thing? Uh, yeah, it's a subscription unless you have a hacked version. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> which, you know, which you don't have. I, which, I, you don't which, have. which I don't have. Yeah. 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 But which I, we I, encourage I, you to buy the real one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But um, yeah. Keep there's, with those updates. You know? There's other guys yeah. I heard on the internet that actually do do do, do that, and I'm, I'm against that. Do 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 do. <laughs> Oh man! There was a there, someone, some DJ. I want to say this was two or three years ago. I, I can't remember if it was Carnage. I think it might have been Carnage. Where he was doing like an online like tutorial on how to use like a certain like a like a reverb or something like that. Like he was just like, hey, you know, this is Carnage. I'm doing this, this, and this, and like the software company like hit him with piracy Ooh. because they were like, you have a cracked version Ooh. of our software, and we have video proof of it. And then it was just like. <laughs> Just so you guys know, I recently went out and bought the actual. <laughs> Where it was like. Uh, so it was anyways. One, um, no, it was one of those that like I looked at and I was like, I'm glad to know like guys at that level are still like still yeah, trying yeah, to hack yeah. the program. Yeah, Just yeah, be like, would... fuck you guys and your 300 bucks that you're asking for. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing the thing that um, my friends don't have to worry about is, you know, like all the updates of like relearning, like, you know, the interface or like how it works, um, you know, with with my friends that are continuing to use the program. It just stays the same. So, oh, so there's no updates. Yeah, so yeah, it just yeah, it just stays the same age. <laughs> they keep getting older. <laughs> they keep coming out with newer and newer yeah. versions, and mine just stays the exact <laughs> same age. <laughs> I'm like, where are my drinks at here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Better put some ice in that, man. Yeah, Sunday night. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Yeah. Oh, um. Did you guys have any awesome. other any other things that you wanted to bring up? Um, and there's stuff that you're working on new singles coming out by the way if you guys haven't checked it out i checked it out earlier today barcelona on youtube uh the tenlo uh i think it's tenlo music on youtube yep, yep. It's just youtube uh dot com backslash tenlo yeah Pretty check easy. out their music uh check out the videos the dustin diamond videos um what else was there the stormy the stormy one yep. as well yep. um the barcelona was that the lyric video one of them, I was watching a lyric video. It's really the other basic. Day. Uh, we didn't shoot a music video per se for this one, for, but it yeah. did also just get added to Pandora today, and we're on Spotify with it too. Yeah, Spotify, so. music, all the all the platforms. Deezer. So yeah. How's the we jamming that out to the car? And, oh, yeah. and I'll be I'll be bombing around on my new scooter. Yeah, <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, that's the first one we mixed and mastered ourselves, and I think we made like the the lower end a little hot. Mm -hmm. I mean that's between us. I guess you can use your own I, judgment. But I would I would love to see a TikTok video of Parker on his scooter jamming Barcelona, just cruising down like, like drinking tequila like dog face. Yeah, <laughs> dude he is so well, he can be <laughs> drinking tequila. Yeah, it is it is so hard to be able to yeah. do that thing one handed. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, you know he he's trying to cash in on his non fungible token for that video. I just realized I learned about these fungible tokens, online people, and how wait, I, I don't know what this is. Explain. Okay, it's kind of like a, a currency. So I'm I'm a little behind the times on this, so I might explain this wrong. So I'm gonna make this quick, but um, no, no worries. So we're under Bitcoin, no time constraint. Bitcoin is like you know, it's digital currency, right? Mm -hmm. You can get paid for artwork, um, you and and music online. So. Actually, your brother might know more about this topic. We were we were, t yeah, we were we were talking about this last week. So okay. with but Dogface and Fleetwood Mac, um, the goat. <laughs> she doesn't want him using the song. Stevie Nicks. Yeah. For real. Yeah. So he's like all he. 
all he has now to sell is he's starting the bidding at 500 grand for just the video alone mm -hmm. and uh he has to take the music off of it it's like oh man he's trying to sell that video oh so so to an explain NIT. this yeah so an nit so what he's doing is is he's doing that through i think it's the ethereum uh cryptocurrency where you're able to sell that now uh real interesting thing this is something that uh chris Varakis and i kind of dove deeper into off air um there are artists out there that are doing straight to fan work right now so i don't know if you're familiar with the artist blau no so edm artist blau actually shout out to chris who's actually you Dude, you're cool, man. You don't have to crack that down there. It's all good. <laughs> I didn't want to God. interrupt the sound barrier. You no, know? it's all good, dude. <laughs> like, Everyone else heard you crack that. It's all good. Okay. Um, Let's <laughs> keep it on the low. Yeah, so yeah, just, just Chris Chris had had booked Blau, and he, he knows him personally, but he had said that he goes, yeah, he goes, he sold his last album that he just did. It's not up for major release. He sold it to a fan for $13 million in cryptocurrency, and there's no management. There's no label. It's just straight artists to fan. And the conversation I had with him, I was like, there's there's a number of things that are starting to take this format where they're instead of having a middleman, yeah. they're you can do them over this network and you can literally like, for example, you guys are, are doing a tour instead of dealing with Ticketmaster or Live Nation, you can do it through this network and deal directly with your fans or you can build up where you go, hey, this is what we're doing right now. We're getting ready to, I don't know, we're going to take over a stage at Summerfest. But to be able to do this, we need X amount of dollars. So if there's enough interest in people doing it where they go, okay, we'll sign up for this early. Those early people can get like certain access and shit like that. And then you guys can release tickets afterwards and sell them directly to fans with no middleman whatsoever. So let's say awesome. you rent out the Harley stage for 10 grand. But to be able to do that, you need at least 10 grand to cover your expenses. Sure. Well, you have your fans that then go, hey, we're interested. We put this amount of money out there for you guys to do this. As soon as it hits 10 grand, you can start doing ticket sales. Anything that you guys have then sold then becomes yours. And then anything you sell afterwards directly becomes yours. So you're able to eliminate, um, you're able to make more money and then also able to deal directly with your fans where instead of paying I was talking about this recently new order tickets were like 190 bucks but it ended up being like 260 the service fee that was on that sure. was like 60 bucks so you eliminate that 60 bucks and you instead of charging your fans that you just go hey buy our merch instead like come to the concert pay x amount of dollars save the 60 dollars in ticket fees buy our merch mm -hmm. that's and that's awesome. it's, it's yeah. over the next 10 years You'll probably see that be like the new format where you see Live Nation, Ticketmaster kind of go by the yeah. wayside. See you guys. Yeah. And you can have this with just about anything. You can do any type of format whatsoever you want to do with. The artwork and music is probably just going to be the first step. I don't know. I'm thinking optimistically, but it makes it a million times fucking easier when you don't have someone like basically with their hand in your pocket. Does that make right. sense? Oh, yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. NFT, non fungible token. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, fun to say. Yeah. so yeah, dude, oh. it's definitely something to fucking look into if you guys are, especially if you guys are trying to do more and more shows and shit right. like that. Yeah, we dude. hope we hope Dogface makes a dick load off his N off of his NFT. Yeah, Dogface, <laughs> if you're listening right now, and you need some, I don't know, some yeah. kind of trippy song, we, maybe called Barcelona. Yeah, and we know another guy with a scooter that could ride with you. Hell's yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> I scoot, scoot, motherfucker. No matter what, I still want to see Parker cruising down the road, jamming Barcelona on his we're, scooter. Dude, we're fucking doing seriously, this tonight, man. Seriously, well, we we need to put that. We need to put that out on uh, Facebook and Instagram. All we're, that yeah, stuff, yeah, you know? After we're done with this, after we're done with this, okay. we're gonna take the scooter out. Yeah, it's tra right. it's it's literally been charging while we've been doing this. That would be awesome. We're dude, you guys just pull up alongside <laughs> me, fucking blast the single. I'll, dude, we'll roll right down Water Street right now. Oh, yeah. Woo! Oh, yeah. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, guys, I want to thank you for coming on and doing the podcast with me. This has been a lot of dude. fun. Yeah. Um, I was, dude, thank we never even us. got, yeah, we never even got a chance to talk about that that keyboard that the dude dug from uh, Gravity Kills. Oh, yeah, that's right. That thing's sick. We don't, we, we'll design that. We were talking about it a little nice. bit off air. We're going to design one of your keyboard stands. We'll, and br we'll bring it in here the next time. Fuck yeah, dude. That's, awesome. The way he had that set up, though. Like yeah. I said, he's got that bar. It's kind of wide, and he had that huge... I mean, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, those synthesizers were fucking huge. 
but he had that thing velcroed in and then there was like a handle in there and there's like a four hydraulic system <laughs> i mean i got a good look at it i think i might be able to replicate it yeah. we can do it yeah we can yeah. do it we can definitely do <laughs> this. this uh trace yeah. amigos if you're out there or 1800 and you want to sponsor this venture with some tequila we're available. Hell yeah. Holler Thanks at us. Amigos. Yeah. Listen, put- I want to thank you guys again, Tommy and uh, Joey Zach, for, for joining me in studio. Uh, check them out on YouTube. Check them out on Spotify, Pandora. The band is Tenlo. New single is Barcelona. Uh, give us feedback. Give us feedback, guys. Uh, look for the remix soon from yours truly. On that note, we are out. Thank you, gentlemen. Woo. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Cheers. See you. All right. Hell yeah. <laughs>